the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Impact means to have a notable or a strong effect on someone or something. To be impactful means that you are having a notable effect on someone or something. God desires that our ministries be fruitful. God desires that our ministries produce tangible results, transgenerational results, results even beyond ourselves. And let me tell you this, in as much as our motivation is Jesus, but one of the true secrets of fulfillment for men is you have to know that the effort that you are making is producing results, is transforming lives that people are getting changed if you do not have a feedback system that lets you know that your life is counting, eventually you will be frustrated. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So there are principles. The kingdom is built on principles. God is a God of systems and he built this kingdom on principles. There are principles that we can engage in. Some of them very powerfully the man of God has shared them, so I will not touch on them. I will just give us maybe four or five, then briefly, 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll pray. Believe me, when I tell you these principles will transform any man of God, will transform any ministry, and turn it into not only a ministry of signs and wonders, but a ministry whose impact will last. Hallelujah. It's a terrible thing for your impact to die while you are still alive. Praise the name of the Lord. There are many people who have started, many people who have done very well, and yet they are unable to do anything sustainable that lasts. Generally speaking, Africa has a problem of sustainability. You know, whether it's in business and all of that, we hardly have third or fourth generations of anything. It dies maximum after one or two generations. You go to the US, you can find companies and corporations, for instance, that are hundreds of years old, passed down from children to grandchildren. But here, someone will come up and violate the principles, breach the equation, and recycle pain over families again. And so I'm trusting that that which God will give us this afternoon, very briefly, will strengthen our convictions in Jesus' name. Number one, the first key to make sustainable impact within a territory, within a generation, the following must be in place. Number one is the message. The message or the mandate. You have to understand this. The message is very powerful. Just like the man of God said about the battle acts, you know, very powerful revelation there. It is the message that gives the messenger credence. You have to understand this. The value that is placed on the messenger is because of the message you are carrying. Now, there is a difference between messages, series, teachings, and the message. The message or the mandate defines why you exist. This is very, very important. You ask an average pastor, why are you here? They tell you, I'm here to preach the gospel. What did God tell you? He says, go into all the world. No, that's not a message to you. That's not your message. That's the great commission. It was given to everybody. The message attempts to describe your unique contribution to the whole picture of kingdom come. If you do not understand the message, you can have messages. You can have conferences. But you will never be able to find your place in ministry, your place of relevance, your place of impact. The message. If you are Oral Roberts, the message is to take the healing power of Jesus to the nations. 
if you are in Hadbonke, the message is to see that salvation comes to everyone, especially the continent of Africa. The message. There are many people full of zeal, many people full of fire. They fast, they pray, they are well intentioned, but there is no message. The message. Very, very powerful. I'm summarizing, otherwise I would have shown you a place in scripture where two messengers were running to go and meet the king. One did not have a message, he ran ahead. Many people are running, but there is no message. Listen, your authority is tied to the message. And if you do not have what to say, there is no reason why they should listen to you. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he commanded creation to hear him. You only hear who has what to say. The message. So we must obtain grace from God to stay in the place of prayer and find out, Lord, what are you sending me to do? Not knowing your message will lead to competitive jealousy. There will be vacillations. Today you stand for this, next tomorrow you have changed. We no longer know what you believe. After two weeks you read a book and suddenly you are back to what you used to believe before. That kind of vacillation will not produce consistent results. Even if you are wrong, at least have something stable so that it's easy to correct you. Are you seeing that now? The message. The message. It defines why you exist. The message helps you identify the people who should work with you and it helps them identify you. Because when God sends people to come and stand by you, he carves them so that they will uniquely fit the message. This is very simple but very powerful. The message. Why do you exist? This is true for ministry. It's true for business. It's true for any aspect of life at all. The Bible says to write the vision. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower so that I will see what he will say. He says, write the vision, make it plain that he will run that reads it. Hallelujah. Number two, very quickly. The second key to make sustainable impact in the territory is a strong leadership and organizational structure. Please write it down. Unfortunately, these are the other auxiliary support systems that most ministers ignore. There is always a temptation for ministers to take advantage of the presence of the anointing, the presence of the word of God, and then ignore the support systems that make ministry work. Strong leadership and organizational structure. There has to be a well-structured leadership with clear tasks and expectations. If you do not have strong leadership, no matter how powerful your message is, it will not go far and you will be surprised that even though you are having encounters with God, the world is not hearing what you stand for. Strong leadership. This is very important. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says, strike the shepherd. Leave the sheep alone. They can do anything they want to do. Just focus on the shepherd. If you are able to successfully strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. Are we together now? Yes. It says, while shepherds watch their flocks by night, they were watching the flocks. This is very, very important. Leadership is very important. Everything in ministry will eventually reflect the leaders. The belief system, the prevalent belief system in the ministry will look like that of the leaders. Leadership is very important. I have seen very spiritual people, very anointed people, very powerful people who if they had very strong leadership structures, they would give the Holy Spirit space to do so much in their lives. But while, do you know that it was lack of leadership that led to first and second Corinthians? I hope you realize that. It was at a point, historically speaking, where there was such a move of the Spirit. Prophecy, the gift of the Spirit. And when Paul came to Corinth, he observed such dimension of chaos. In the presence of spirituality, there was still chaos. And he called a conference. He said, all of you sit down. We need to get to a point where we do things decently and in order. 
So he began to teach. It was Paul that classified the spiritual gift and gave it context so that they could now mentor others. We never knew it was called word of knowledge. Those who practiced it initially did not know it was called word of wisdom. It was Paul that classified it, gave it names, and gave it a structure for administration. People would get up and prophesy anyhow. People started taking communion. And because they did not have a system to refine those wines very well, they still were alcoholic. And Paul found out that people were taking communion in church. And something interesting were happening because, you know, what remains now, people now, take, and people were getting drunk and Paul said, no, 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 we need a conference. Something is going wrong here. So the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of revival, signs and wonders does not negate leadership. Leadership brings structure. In Ezekiel chapter 37, the first thing that happened was the restoration of the bones. Bones represent structure. Before flesh and life came, the skeletons first came. They were scattered. Son of man, speak to these bones. The Bible says bone came to his bone. Not just bones randomly. Bones came to his bone. Now he could prophesy flesh and he could prophesy breath and there arose an exceeding great army. Are we together? Very, very important. When Joseph was speaking prophetically, he said one day, Joseph in Egypt now, he was encouraging the people, paraphrasing, one day, an exodus will be declared. He said, when you are living, make sure you carry my bones. My bones there does not just mean my physical bone. There is a structure that brought the presence of God and preserved you. Don't leave Egypt and leave it behind. Carry that structure. The formula that kept God with you in a strange land. When it was time to feed the 5,000 people, the first thing that was employed was not miracle, it was leadership. Let them sit in 50s. Arrange them. Don't you think there were people who arranged these people well? How do you think they were able to discover 12 baskets without effective leadership? Because when people come and eat and their food, they just go. And he said, go and gather the fragments. Leadership is very, very important. It takes leadership for this to happen as it's happening now. Concurrently, the singles are having their session. Business people are having their session. Ministers are having their session at the same time, conserving time. This is leadership. So we may need to go back in addition to all the impartations and all the things we have received. Find out what is the problem. Why is this church not growing? There may be a problem of leadership. Leadership is very important. It's very powerful. Are we blessed? There has to be a well-structured um, a well-structured strategy. Look at this. Why use this? Please give me something. If while I'm preaching this falls on the ground. You see that? Because you love me and respect me, chances are that two or three people will rush to pick it because you don't you did not assign who should do it imagine the chaos and the injury that will come to the people although they are well intentioned but because there is no leadership every time there is no leadership initiative is not coordinated people try to do everything everything someone just decides that they are not counting thank you thank you that they are not counting money in the church well let me use my accounting skills all of a sudden you open the room and sit there. Another person makes up his mind that this church doesn't look like for rebellion within that church because there is no leadership. Are we together now? Many people have suffered casualty because of the fear of creating structure. As the peace does not mean we should allow things to happen anyhow. There has to be structure. Are we together? This is very important. Can I tell you this? If your leadership is inaccurate, there is a quality of men that your vision will never be able to attract. The Bible says Gentiles will come to your light, but their kings don't come to your light. Their kings come to the brightness of your rising. Queen Sheba, on hearing the dexterity and the level of leadership in Solomon's uh, kingdom and the temple and everything, she now came to inquire of herself. The Bible says when she saw the arrangement, the cups, everything, the order, she had no breath in her. 
We need excellent leadership. There must be people assigned to do what? It's very important. There have been very spiritual churches where people continue stealing money for many years. But because there was no leadership, you could not be detected, you could not be seen. Is that true? There are all kinds of things that happen in a structure where there is no leadership. Very important. Number three, the third key that makes for sustainable impact in any territory, in any church, is your execution strategy. I wish I had time to work these things. Execution strategy. For every vision, there is a strategy. For every command, there is a system. If you are Moses and your assignment is to bring the nation of Israel from Egypt to cross the Red Sea, the strategy is to stretch forth your own. The power is released when the patterns are kept. Now look at me, please. God is a God of patterns. Every time the glory shows up, it shows up to confirm that his patterns have been kept. You don't invent your formula as far as the dealings of God is concerned. The pattern God may give someone else, you will practice it and fail because it was not the pattern assigned for you. There should always be a strategy for your execution. Just because you parted the Red Sea today does not mean you have to part the sea tomorrow. Tomorrow it may need to walk on water. It's still a strategy. Are we together now? Yes. This is one of the disadvantages of tradition. Tradition wants to insist that you maintain yesterday's strategy even when God has changed it. Just because God is not doing something today the way he did years ago does not mean he's not the one doing it. Strategy. For every assignment, there is strategy. If you stand before Jericho, you need to go around Jericho seven times. There are times that you will stand still and God will do the fight. Other times he will empower you and you will do the fight. Very important. Now watch this. Strategy here is broken into the activities of the ministry. What has God asked you to do? Now, let me tell you something. Please look up. At the point where you are receiving revelations from God, the impact of that revelation, because it comes from the realm of the spirit, it does not have time allocated to it. So it will look as if God is asking you to do it now. Are we together now? God can give you five, six things to do. Whereas those five, six things in time will be over a span of 30 years. But the impact of that revelation will make you think God said you should do it now. You will need to understand your activities. The, the, the long span of our purpose is broken into seasonal mandates. There is what God will ask you to do per season. Per season. For others, God can say, start your prayer group. You just be praying. Whereas what you saw was a crusade and a ministry with churches all over the world. But in this season, what is he doing? Now you get up sometimes and say, I must make what I saw come to pass. The resources, the training, the equipping is not yet there at that time. But the strength and the impact of the vision you saw will make you to fail and you'll be surprised you are failing whereas your vision is genuine. Are we together? Have you seen people who just went to stand by the road preaching because they had a revelation of heaven? They had a revelation of hell. And they did not stay to come up with an intelligent strategy for effective evangelism. They carried the fire that they got from their vision and just stood. And they were preaching and everybody was passing them. And for the few weeks they were preaching, you would think they would remain like that for the rest of their life. After one year, two years, they said, look, we have to leave this thing. Same people. Because of inefficiency. You must define the activities around your ministry. Everything is not welcome. Every good thing is not welcome. There will be suggestions coming from everywhere. Let's try this. Let's do this. This is what we are doing. But you must stay with God and say, this is the strategy that God has given us for this season. Are we together now? The pandemic... Sadly, many pastors lost members, lost churches. The of the inability to receive divine strategies, the execution strategies. There are things that God has told your man of God how this ministry should be run. 
You may try that arbitrarily in your ministry and it may not work for you. Are we together? Strategy is very important. Still under execution strategy, let me add two more. Culture and ethics. Still under execution strategy. Culture and ethics. We're talking of sustainable impact. How do you behave and how do you function within that organization? Listen, one of the ways that you brand your impact is to come up with a culture and an ethic of operation. You notice that what I'm teaching goes beyond just church setting. Because you see, to those who come to church, they are coming for a spiritual encounter. But to those who lead the church, this is an organization that drives to Christian values. It's important that the church be viewed as an organization that thrives on Christian values so that you do not compromise on the organizational principles that makes for excellence. The awareness that this is God's work, this is God's project, alone will leave the church in disarray and disaster because it justifies mediocrity, it justifies a lot of excuses. We say, after all, this is not a bank. After all, this is a spiritual adventure. To those who come for worship, they are coming to church. But to those who lead that organization, it is always an organization only that it stands on Christian values. If you do not teach your people this, you will be surprised that while you are growing spiritually, every other thing will be dying. Culture and ethics. How do we behave? How do we behave? When you go to a bank, there is a way you behave. There is a way they are taught to behave. Is that true? In church, there is a modus operandi. There is a way that, that maintains consistency. If you go to every Victory Life Bible Church, I presume, you will almost feel as if you are in the mother church. Do you know why? Because the formula is let it be done in earth as it is in heaven. Standardize your results. Produce consistency. You cannot have five branches looking like five different things. No. No. It will be difficult for people to be loyal to the faith and to follow what the, the propositions that you bring spiritually when there is that level of difference. If you see Coca-Cola anywhere, it looks almost the same. It's only those who produce it who know the difference, the one that comes to Africa, the one that is in Europe. But from plain sight, when you see Coca-Cola, you cannot call it Jupiter. Listen to me. Differences that creates your reward. There has to be a clear modus operandi as part of your culture and your ethics. This is what brands you and this is what stands you out. How do we behave in this church? What is the protocol for welcoming people? What is the protocol for having service? You don't sit down while service is on, you are saying, oh dear, who takes prayer next? Are you free? Say yes, say please, quickly. As this praise and worship is almost on, just, just follow through the back, come to the front. And whilst that is happening, the choir, they are arguing. When they come to sing, they are all in the spirit. Someone is singing the second stanza, whereas the rest are, were not aware that the second stanza should start. And the person singing it is shouting and with his eyes closed. So the person leading now cannot tell him, you are making a mistake. And he's singing it passionately and disorganizing everything. And your destiny helper is following online and says, this is not worth my commitment. Execution is very important. There must be culture and ethics. It's not to remove the spirit out. Because the mistake that people have made is in a bid to create culture and ethics, they have extracted the spirituality out of it. And everything is like acting a movie. But within the context of the leadership of the Holy Spirit, you can come up with a level of excellence that will call nobles and kings to be part of your vision. You would notice that there is certain never come to your church. It's not because you are not anointed. Excellence is a language. There are people who can speak it. If I speak Yoruba now, all Yoruba speaking people will stand up and respond because I'm speaking your language. Excellence is someone's language. And when you speak it, they will answer you back. Are we next? For now, culture and ethics priorities. You cannot allocate value for everything at the same level. No. No. Praise the name of the Lord. 
For a very long time, when, when I started ministry for many years, my focus was not on building structure. My focus was on building people. So the structure really didn't matter. My concern was just to make do with everything that was there. There was little, very little investment in structure, in terms of maybe physical structure. No. My, my passion was people. There were times we would sit on the ground, but the emphasis, I didn't consider myself a failure because my priority at that point was to build the people. Are you seeing that now? But now I got to a point where structure became a concern. So we had to start coming up with ways to now work on the ambience, work on excellence and all of that. This is important. God blesses you based on the priority he gives you for the moment. It is important. If God gives you one million in your account, you have to find out there is, there is what, if you use that money within the structure that you present in priority, it will be enough. If you get up now and go and start holding crusades in stadiums, whereas that is not an emphasis now, even though God told you it will be part of your ministry, there are people who are doing things that the time has not come yet. The problem is not error in perception, it's error in timing. Are we blessed? Very, very important. The message, strong leadership, execution strategy. Every warrior, every army wins, not just by the size of the people, but the dexterity of their execution. Is that true? Yes. When it was time to fight the Midianites, Gideon, with 300 men, they were given a strategy. And with that strategy, they won, they fought valiantly, and they won. Number four, are we blessed? The fourth secret of sustainable impact in ministry and organizationally speaking is, you will be surprised to hear this, but your marketing and your reach, pay attention. Your marketing and your reach. Wow. Wow. This is why many ministries and many people are small and they remain very small. Not because God is not with them. It is important for people to know you are there. It is important for people to know what God is doing in your life. It is important. How else will they come and take advantage of the grace of God upon your life when they know you are not there? This talks of number one, the media ministry. In today's world, you must pay attention to the media ministry. It is one of the secrets that will help to expand your reach. There are only so many places you can go to at a time. But the media gives you the ability to move further. I'm not talking of a lot of nonsense that happens in media. I'm talking of a constructive use of media as a tool for kingdom come. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Over 70% of the people who have been blessed by my life have not met me physically. But this is the power of the media. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the city. It was noised abroad. As done to you, has gone ahead of you. That way it prepares the heart of the people to receive of your grace. It is very difficult for you to be the one to introduce yourself. Please listen to what I'm telling you. You must trust God for grace that the Holy Ghost in partnership with all these tools he has provided for us will be able to send that which you do abroad. Hallelujah. Marketing and reach. Number one, under it is media ministry. Pay attention to media ministry. Pay attention. You can stand here. Praise God. Let me have your attention. So pay attention to media ministry very important. Media ministry is not posting rubbish on social media. Snapping your shoe, snapping your clothes, snapping your car. Let me tell you something. It's a kind advice. I'm speaking to men of God. The moment you answer this call, you are already a subject of attack. Do not amplify the pathway to your own attack by being childish and, and, and immature on social media. Do you know why lots of people never rest? Because success in itself by default has a side effect. 
When you now multiply two childishness, you will pay a bitter price. If there is anything that comes from a man of God on social media, it should be something that promotes the gospel, something that helps to galvanize society. Are we together? Yes, by human beings, but you cannot sit down and everything that happens on social media is your shoe. Look the faithfulness of God. Just for this wish, $2,000 from original Gucci store. This is not invitation. And you say that, then you are right. Let everything that has been I assure you, the chances are that you are programming a new door of an act you may not be able to survive. Are we together now? Yes, sir. We have to be careful because sometimes the Bible says, and Mary kept these things to herself. Yeah. Let me tell you another secret that will help you as far as maximizing the media ministry. Human beings are very unforgiving. They have a psychological way of rating men of God. On serious, serious, not so sure what you can become. They're very serious. If they will do it to your hearing, it's them. So when they say there is a conference, they just look around and then check their list again. You know, this is not worth my time. I won't go there. I know that it's, that my time will be thoroughly wasted. You must be able to give a of someone who loves the Lord and is very serious and passionate with the assignment God is giving you. Are we together now? And then social media can be you opening yourself to security risk. The days that we live in today, somebody can literally put your pictures together and know everywhere you are, they will assassinate you and kill you. The Bible calls it the death of a fool. Are you getting blessed with what I'm saying? Many people have become victims of all kinds of casualties today because they did not know how to maximize the social media. But media is very powerful. Number two, the power of testimonies. Still talking about your marketing and reach. Let me tell you this. It is, it is a, testimonies are very powerful. They help the people know what the Lord is doing in your midst. They validate the fact that you are truly called of God and then they provoke to love to Moses. It's a mistake that I made when I started out in ministry because of my background and I'm not a spotlight person at all. At all. When you come to me and you know me personally, you will always be irritated by my lifestyle. I'm not one person who likes spotlight and celebrity lifestyle at all. It's just unfortunate that sometimes when you carry certain mandates, there's no, there's nothing you can do again. Praise the name of the Lord. I can't remember where I was traveling to, and then suddenly the pilot said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just to acknowledge the presence of Apostle Joshua Selman, and I said, oh. <laughs> within a few minutes, someone had come and said, I can't believe it. You give me this, I can't waste time. I said, no, I don't take selfies. He said, please now. And then all kinds of things happened. I felt so bad. Some of you enjoy it thoroughly. You say, can I have the recording? The whole world was here. That's not testimonies. That's not what I'm talking about. So we don't confuse <laughs> what we are discussing here. It is important. One of the reasons why we believe in the Lord today is because testimonies were archived here. Many miracles Jesus did, the Bible says, which were not recorded here. But these were recorded that you might believe. Testimonies are powerful. There have been so many miracles in my life past, but they were not archived, they were not recorded. And so we wasted opportunities to bring God glory. We wasted opportunities to provoke people to righteousness, to love Jesus. There is a way that you announce miracles that people see the sincerity and the purity of your communication. That this is not about making a name for self, but this is to announce that Jesus is still alive. Are we together? Presentation of miracles matter. If the entire emphasis of the miracle is you, then something is wrong. Miracles are pointers. They should let people know that Jesus is still alive. But please do not downplay the place of testimonies. Let people know that God still saves through your platform. Let people know that God still heals through your platforms. Let people know that Jesus Christ is still alive, doing great and mighty things. How do you sell products? You have a business. 
if, for instance, if I have someone here and you are the one who does all of these portraits, how do I know that I need you or you need me if you do not let me see what you are doing? The Bible says, hold this and see that the Lord is good. It's important. Are we together? Testimonies also help people to know what kind of grace you carry so that they can come and place a demand there. There are people who, if once you are buried, it's like almost all arrows point to their grace because of the versatility of testimonies around fruitfulness they have received. If testimonies do not come, they don't help people to see the dimensions of God committed to you. Everyone who is coming to a Benihim meeting has specific encounters and expectations because of testimonies. Are we together now? And then, the place of ingathering and personal invitations. Don't downplay it. Come see a man, she said, who has told me everything I have done. Jesus himself said it. Everyone who thirsts, let him come. It's not, it's not, it's, you are not downplaying the power of God when you ask people to come. If it is true that you know that all things are ready, then don't be ashamed and afraid to tell people to come. You can say it through your posters, you can say it through all kinds of things. Now, for those of you who maybe have been conversant with our ministry, for instance, it's very supernatural because then when I was in Zaria, you would not see one poster, one billboard, one anything. It was just a unique expression of God's grace to me. Many people have done it and they suffered. They suffered because it was not a pattern God gave them. Copying things blindly without a revelation from God will always lead to pain. Are we together? Let Jesus know. Let people know what Jesus is doing within your platform. Now, I want to talk about a very sensitive part and then we are done. Number one, the message. Number two, leadership. Number three, your execution strategy, the pattern given to you by God. Number four, your marketing and your reach. How the nations get to know you are there. Number five, finance. Please pay attention. This has brought reproach to more ministries than you can imagine. This subject, this mysterious subject of finance, I wish we had time, but my confidence is in the fact that your man of God is a veteran in this area. God has granted him grace. So it's safe to touch whatever area and then we'll stop there. Let me tell you the truth. You need resources to drive the mandate of God given to you. You need resources. It's a non-negotiable condition. The gospel is free, but the means to take it to the lost is not free. You must understand this. I know people who I have met in my life who have had encounters and they said God gave them an assignment. Let these truths I have shared with you get to the nations of the earth and it has not gone out of their community. Why? Because the resources are not there. Can I tell you this? Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. He would rather leave the healing anointing work while he holds back finances because you can't be healed for another person. You see, I can't receive healing. My healing and say I share with you. Not necessarily. But when you are blessed, you are blessed to be a blessing. So he fights it. It was money that was used to stop the advocacy of the resurrection. Remember? He begged people to say, go and tell them that they stole his body. Satan is still paying today to bring down the name of Jesus. Finance is a very important thing. Most times, do you know, if we talk about the subject of prayer here, the sincere, most of you, God has helped you in that area. Am I right? If we talk about the issue of word study, God has helped you. Consecration, God has helped you. But the major issue for many people is finances. Because a time will come when you find out that where you meet with your people is too small. You will need to go beyond the Jordan like they told Elijah. At that point, you will now find out we need generator. We need buses. Remember when God called you, you didn't need it because there were only five people. Whoever falls down, you just carry one side and keep it there. But now the ministry has grown. 
you find out the cost of land and they tell you something you consider to be an evil report. You come back down and you cannot sleep. Let me tell you this, there are, there are many, many, listen, there are many well-intentioned servants of God who are almost dying of high blood pressure today. Have you seen people that quarrel members on stage? When you look at them and discern, you know that it's not what they are saying that really is the problem. There is something burning in the man of God's heart. No resources for this and that. Please listen to what I'm saying. If this is all you get in this conference, if you don't pay attention to your finances, I guarantee you, no matter how anointed you are, it's only a matter of time. You will use your lifetime to pay the price. Zechariah, cry yet say, 1 Zechariah 1 17. Cry yet say, thus saith the Lord, yeah. my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad, and I will yet comfort Zion. Now listen, when we talk about the subject of wealth and finances, there are two sides to it. There is the side that comes from a standpoint of flesh and, and self-glorification and a side that absolutely does not bring glory to the name of the Lord. It's just about cars and houses and massage in the flesh. That's not what I'm talking about at all. We are talking about the availability of resources for kingdom come, for the betterment of your own life. Don't forget that when you preach, you have children. Don't forget that while you preach, you have relatives. A number of you have been involved in all kinds of church counseling and you see people who have been serving God for years. They say, don't bring that God talk to me. In 1970, 1980, we were the ones who brought here lost. Look what God has done out of my life. I was doing well when he called me and we make it look as though God called us into destruction. The Bible says he's called many sons into glory. Some of you are parents. If someone comes now and says, I want to marry your daughter, I say, what do you do? You say, I answer the call of God. You now look at him and say, it's all right, you will hear from me. And, and, and tell your daughter, if I ever hear you talk about bringing this person in, not because you hate the gospel. It's like there is a track record through the years. He said, my yoke is easy. That means there is a way that yoke is pushing me. It's not God that can take it. Are we blessed? Yes. My people are destroyed. You see, I lamented in chapter 4 and verse 6. For the lack of knowledge. It is not ministry that makes people poor. It is not ministry that makes people broke. Believe what I tell you. It is the inability to understand the economic system of the kingdom. At a personal level and at a corporate level. Most people believe ministers of the gospel know nothing about finances. And largely they are right. Our inaccuracy in understanding the subject of finance has led to so many things. So there are compromises beyond imagination. Why? Because the truth is that when the bills mount, when many things go wrong, you will have to find a way of now beginning to compromise in ways that destroy you and tear down something you have built for decades in one day. Someone shout God for me. You see the ministries that thrive and do well. I want to assure you that it does not just happen because God uniquely called them and blessed them. There are principles that are being formed. We don't have the time to walk you through it. But I assure you, if for any reason you have not been paying attention to your finances... Please pay attention to it. Let me tell you what I am not saying. For many people, once we say, pay attention to your finance, the first thing you think about is business. What should I do? Ah, I wish I had time to help me, Holy Spirit. Let me tell you this. You will never become wealthy just by doing things. Listen to me. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Wealth is not pursued. Wealth is attracted by who you become, not just what you do. What you do gives expression to who you are becoming. This is the mistake we do. I am pursuing money and you leave God to pursue it. I am pursuing this. The Bible says to prosper even as thy soul prosper. There is a way you pursue money and some of these things that it erodes your relationship with God, your prayer life, your passion for spiritual things. You find out that spiritually you are dying. Everything is going down in your life. That's the way Satan prospers me. 
But please do not make the mistake of ignoring the place of finance in your life and in your church. It takes a lot of resources to drive the kingdom. And if you want to walk in kingdom integrity, you must stay with God and stay with the spirit of wisdom to give you a blueprint for finance. Generally, the way finance works in ministry is that it's answers to give out. Generally speaking, I'm not going to go into so much details, but the real secret of finance in ministry is not just having people who give you money. No. Finance was designed to answer to impact. When your life truly becomes impactful, when your ministry truly becomes impactful, then you give who? First for those who have benefited from what you stand for. To now come and bring resources that attend to it. Are we together? Let me be sincere with you. There is no amount of business that sustains the capacity to drive ministry. The work of the kingdom is not like building an organization. So I don't downplay your business acumen. Most of you here have other businesses you are doing. But if that is what you believe will drive ministry, think again. The primary tool for carrying the presence of God is man. Remember the mistake of Uzzah. Man. Man. The Lord gave the word. Great is the company of them that published it. So when your life and your ministry becomes very impactful, very, very impactful, God will begin to raise men and women. Can I tell you this? Believe me, you don't know how cheap it is to rise financially until God garnishes you with the grace that produces genuine results. Everybody on earth have discovered is a giver. It's only that they won't give to everybody. Your uncle that refuses to give you money will go to a man of God who blessed him and go down on his knees and carry times 10 what you are asking for and say, sir, please let it be an honor to sow into your life. So is that man greedy? The subject of greed is only related to your experience. There is a level of supernatural impact by the Spirit that can bring many things to your life, men, together with resources, to the point that you will lay up gold as dust. And of course, there are spiritual principles. Many ministers don't prosper because they do not practice the principles they teach. They say give, but they never give. They say fast, but they never fast. They say pray, but they never pray. Your life revolves around your obedience. If your organization is obedient, it will receive the results of obedience. While you as a man of God, you will find out surprisingly that you are not rising. There is he that scattereth and yet increases, the Bible says. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Are we together? If you are not a giver as a man of God, you are not going to rise. If you are not valuable as a man of God, you are not going to rise. If you are not strategic as a man of God, you are not going to rise. The last thing that I will talk about, oh damn. Have you let me find this to talk about? Is the power of relationships. Be fruitful means be relational. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationship. I can spend a whole day sharing on relationships. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. A king hates a woman and immediately she stops being queen. A king likes another village girl and immediately she becomes queen. Who likes you matters in this kingdom. Relationships are powerful. We must understand the principles. I was having a discussion day before yesterday with one of the political fathers in this nation and he invited me over for a meeting and whilst we were speaking, again I saw through his communication the supernatural power of relationships. How that doors can open overnight on the strength of relationships. Please, if you have been sleeping, wake up. Let these five minutes be a real deliverance. Relationships are advantageous connections. 
please write it down. If an arm robber knows you, that's not a relationship because it's not an advantageous connection. Relationships are advantageous connections. Sorry, I've been quoting scriptures. We've not written anything. At least let's write something. Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together, the Bible says, except they be agreed. That means except they be compatible. Relationships are very, very, very powerful. Very powerful. When God wants to lift you, he will introduce a man to your life. If Satan wants to destroy you, he will introduce a man to your life. All blessings come from God through men to you. All troubles come from Satan through men to you. It doesn't matter whether it's God or Satan you pay attention to. Men will still be used to cause the final outcome. Please understand what I'm teaching you. My life today is a product of strategic relationships. There are principles that make for relationships. Many prayer warriors do not understand relationships. Many fasting giants do not understand relationships. Many world giants do not understand relationships. Many sincere people intellectually sound do not understand the power of relationships. It is not always just about skill. It is about relationships. Are we together now? Yes. You need valuable relationships in your life. I can spend the whole day teaching on relationships, but let me narrow down my relationship teaching to the Ministry of Destiny Helpers. Let's wrap up with this. I call it the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they call the man called Ziba. Are we together now? And then Ziba, the Bible says Ziba had about 15 children. And he told Ziba, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And they said there is one crippled man called Mephibosheth. Are we Bible students? And they now carried Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth said, am I a dog? What does the king want to do with me? And the king said, you will eat with me at my table forever. And told the children of Ziba that he will plot the land for this man, not for his sake, for the sake of Jonathan. There are times that you are blessed in this kingdom for the sake of others. Your name can become a key or a padlock. It can open up doors and destinies or it can close others. This is very important. There are four I have discovered in my life from scripture and then through experience by the privilege of God's grace. My life is what it is today, not just because I'm anointed. Believe me, I'm not the most anointed person. My life is the way it is today by the grace of God because of many factors among them the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. This was a revelation that God gave me and it changed my life. We study about God, we study about men, we study about Satan, I meant to say, but we never study about men. There are four kinds of destiny helpers you need in your life. Please write it down. Four kinds. If they do not show up in your life, I guarantee the only thing that will be guaranteed in your life, if destiny helpers are not in your life, is heaven. But as far as heaven is concerned, you will suffer as if it's not Jesus you gave your heart to. Number one, the first category of destiny helpers that you need in your life are called divine connectors. Divine connectors do not have the power to help you. But they know who can help you. First Kings chapter 5. Don't turn there, you just write it. The Bible talks about a man called Naaman. Are we Bible students? Yeah. Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he fought valiantly. He was a great man in war. But he was leprous. There was an aspect of his life that would not answer. One day, having captured the slaves, they brought a slave girl who came and ministered to his wife. And she looked at him and became a divine connector. Oh, that my Lord would listen to me. I have a suggestion on how this leprosy will go away. Cut the long story short. It was through her connection that they got to meet Elisha. And finally, he received his miracle. The key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment. Because most times they come in forms that you may not appreciate. A divine connector can be your house help. 
talking nonsense every day except for that day. A divine connector can be your son acting like a child, but then he will speak to you by the spirit and that becomes the key to your next level. You need divine connectors in your life. They don't have the solution to your life, but I assure you they can connect you to who knows. It was the wise man that said every man is only four men away to anybody he wants to see. It's true. Somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who is holding the answer to your prayers. You need to understand the ministry of divine connectors. Hallelujah. Divine connectors. When God gave an instruction to move to Abuja, when I got there, I said, my God, where do we find a kind of venue where we'll be meeting? Because I had seen in the visions, I knew what the Lord was going to do. It was a very difficult thing. And it was not a place where I knew several people. I said, how do we do this? One thing led to the other. God connected me to somebody, connected to somebody. And finally, we got access to the largest auditorium within the city. And now getting access to the largest auditorium within the city. You can imagine what that means in terms of finances and all of that. You see, and when it got to the man, the man said, no way. I don't like church people. They destroy facilities. They destroy all of these things. No way. And then the man was Catholic. He said, no, I've seen the Pope. I mean, die hard Catholic. I don't have any business with any, you know, all of that. It was one connection to the other supernaturally. Today, by the grace of God, that same place is where we used to be. And we run a service with 10 to 15,000 people every week. The favor, the mysterious hand of God. Can you imagine that? Divine connectors. I know what I'm saying. Believe me when I tell you this. Number two. The second category of destiny helpers that you need are called men of influence. There are times you need the gatekeepers themselves, not just those who know them. Men of influence are men with a track record. Men of influence are men who are leading their field. Men of influence are people who have paid the price and they have secured the loyalty of a territory. You need men of influence. You may be Joseph who can interpret dream, but if Pharaoh does not call you, you will still remain in prison. Although you can interpret dream, there are times you do not have the power to stand at the gates. You will need somebody who is already at the gate. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God, the king sent for Joseph. Are we together? Men of influence are very powerful. God can give you a land. And respectfully speaking, government can just come and collect it because you do not have the men of influence that can stand for you. The body of Jesus is hanging on that cross, ladies and gentlemen. No angel could bring it down. No prayer warrior, warrior could bring it down. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea who used his influence to talk to the king and they allowed him to bring back the body and put it in his tomb. Don't reject influence. Many of us run away from people who are influential in a bit to show that no, 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 we just want to stay with God. We are making a mistake. Do not reject influence. You just need to manage it, but please do not reject influence. You will need strong people in your life. One time the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm bringing several people of influence to your life. I said, let it be your God. Today among the many blessings that God has brought to my life, God has brought seven generals to my life. You touch me, it's not only God that will punish you. Men too will punish you. <laughs> because we live, we live in an evil time. When seven generals in the army listen to you, then there is some form of safety and advancement in that. <laughs> you need men of influence. Am I wasting your time? Wow. Be there for two minutes. The third category of destiny helpers that you need to rise in life are called gifted people. There are times you need 
want our sincerity, you need results. You need people who can produce the results. There are many sincere people around us who are psychologically consoling, but as far as the result is concerned, they are not producing the results. You need to pray for people who have capacity, people who can deliver to the latter. Everybody say results. Results. Yes, sir. In business, in ministry, you need people who have results, capacity. When I came in yesterday, I saw a number of your, a number of your protocol people, a number of the people, and I, I could see the level of organization. I saw everything that was done. I said, these people are not only spiritual. These are people who are obviously trained. They have capacity. It's true. Are we together? Just like the man of God shared when he was here, if you are a battle axe, no matter how you are, if you are blunt, much energy will be dissipated because if the axe head is blunt, you will need much energy. It was said that if you are given eight days to cut a tree, use seven days sharpening the axe. And you will hit that tree almost once and it will go down. You can start cutting from day one with a blunt axe and even if they add seven more days, you will not finish. But when you spend time sharpening the knife, you will hit it once. It's called efficiency. You need people who make your life very efficient. Pastors, you must pray. Father, send people, efficient people. One efficient person can take away from you the burden and worry about organization so that you focus on the ministry of the word and prayer. because you are not sure what is happening elsewhere. You need people of capacity. Gifted people. May God send gifted people to our lives in the name of Jesus. Finally, the last set of destiny helpers that you need for your life and your ministry are called burden bearers. Woe betides any man and any minister who will not have someone to stand behind you to hold you in prayer. Burden bearers are not assigned to move you forward. They are assigned to keep you from going backward. Burden bearers are not after your gift and your preaching. It's more than that. There are people who have covenanted with God not only to stand with you but to die with you. Please listen to me. No matter who you are, provided you are alive in this life, a time will come in your life and your ministry where you will need the ministry of God. Jesus was on his way to the cross. He was weak. He was bleeding. And he fell down there. If he died there, you could not say he died as a cause or sin. There was a man who was a burden bearer. Simon of Cyrene, the nigger, who lifted that cross and helped him to take it to Golgotha. There must be people who lift your hands. Financial burden bearers. Spiritual burden bearers. There are men of God who may be doing very well, but something may happen in their homes at a point. And you know the thing with members is they don't expect you to have any issue. I hope you know that. You shouldn't even be tired. They time you by 1 a.m. and say, I expect you to be praying. How about you, sir? No, I'm a bit weak. I'm surprised. Wow, sir. You mean you are sleeping? So, because of the grace God has given us, there are unrealistic expectations. But you need someone you can be able to cry. What happened? It looked like my child is sick. They said something is wrong with my child. And he says, don't worry. Go and preach in the conference. You come back. I'll be waiting for you here. We will pray together and we'll fast. But in parents. When Jesus was on his way to the cross, I have a question for you. Where were all the people he gave them bread and fish? When Jesus was on his way to the cross, where were the blind people and the lame people he healed? They were part of those who said, crucify him. Let his blood be upon our head. But there were some women who followed. They said if we die, we die together. Only John stood with him at the cross. Some of you right here, you are going through seasons of pain because you raised people. God helped you to lift people. Some of them grew up in your own house. You fed them. They went to university. And they are the people now who ended up tearing your life, your ministry, find strength. You can pray for the gift of body. 
Not everybody is deceptive. Not everybody is looking for your pocket or just anointing. Don't get used to deception. There are sincere people. There are genuine people who love you for who you are. And may God send them to our ministries. Bought bearers. I have seen people who are bought in bearers. Believe me, they will die with you there. Will you also live and accept to whom shall we go? You alone have the word of life. As men of God, I can imagine how painful it can be. You raise people, you prophesy over their life, they become multi millionaires and they leave you. And one day you say, look, look what God is doing. And they say, well, I will attend to you one day. We fasted, we prayed. So you don't only need divine connectors. You don't only need men of influence. You don't only need gifted people. You need well body bearers. Who can hold your hands. Who can say, it's all right, let's pray. One story and I'm done. My elder sister, I have an elder sister. And she got a job many years ago with a particular firm in Abuja. And the man was such a nice man. He was a giver to a false and then a time came when the man started falling ill. He was repeated. He started spending a lot of money. And um, it got to a point where they flew him abroad. He was there for about maybe five, six months. And rumors started coming that the guy had died. First they said he was in coma. And it was true. And then rumors came that this guy would not make it. Do you know out of his staff structure of about 70 or so people, everybody stole what they were still. Some who were having the official cars carted away with it. A few of those who were working in finance, two story. They went with all those things. It was my sister and one other man. I remember her calling me that time. I said, don't touch a pain in that office. They said, keep being a fool. You don't know these big men. They will use you and dump you. You better carry what you can carry. And go. For a while, she felt foolish. I said, are you not a Christian? Stay there. The man's wife cried and cried and said, after all we did. Some of them did not have interviews. It was from their churches they recommended people to be there. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? The reality of humans. Eventually, the man did not die, but he was paralyzed. So they brought him into the country. And then, you know, they wheeled him. When he saw his organization, he went and went and went and went. These people brought him down. They had changed some of the landed documents. They got lawyers. I mean, choice properties around this nation. A few of the executives. They came together and said, this guy is a legitimate. Let's change this. His village people will still come and collect it anyway. So let's change the doctor documents. And when he returned back, only my sister and that gentleman, they came to him and they said, good afternoon, sir. And they said, you still call me, sir. He said, I'm still our boss. Just because you're on the wheelchair, our loyalty to you is true. This man blessed them. But eventually the man passed on. I believe one of the things that killed him was the sheer heartbreak. Executives he wrote, some of them he met them from school and took them until they became one of them. Listen, if you don't pray for body bearers, you will be surprised that you are anointed, but you may still not end there. Growing up, I saw my dad raise a lot of people. Several people. He would bring them from the village. He would help them. He would raise them. I will never forget one time when they called me and said the house in the village had been raided. What happened? The same person that my father, they begged my father, they said, don't bring this useless boy to the house. He said, no, let me give you a chance. Eventually, that gentleman stole, raided all kinds of things, and the village people say, we told you. How many of you are paying prices now because people say, we are warning you. Don't bring that house help. That young man, and you say, I still believe in him. Let me speak to you. Don't give up. In the midst of the insincerity that surrounds our world, I'm standing by the Spirit of God and I'm standing in partnership with the grace of God upon your man of God to speak over people with bleeding hearts right now. Disappointed and heartbroken by people who invested in. Cheer up. Body bearers are still coming. In the name of Jesus Christ, financial body bearers. Real body bearers, all wise, we speak them into.
into your life in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the Lord will bless you. I pray that these truths I have shared will contribute in helping your ministry stand, your ministry last, and your ministry thrive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.